I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. This is uh, episode five in our uh, SoCal Bite Fishing Academy. And uh, it's time to uh, take things outside of the harbor. Um, as I mentioned every video, this is part of a series. It's uh, going to cover all aspects of uh, saltwater fishing in Southern California. So um, if you're just joining in now, you might want to look at some of the previous uh, videos to kind of get up to speed on some of the stuff we're talking about. So uh, when we left the bay um, <clears throat> last week, we were talking about the different types of structure. The uh, isolated structure and superstructure. And the whole thing, the same thing holds true in uh, <clears throat> open water in that there are spots that are isolated spots that are just maybe a rock or a patch of hard bottom or a wreck that are basically surrounded by sand. And then there are bigger spots that could be from a couple hundred yards across, two miles long, depending on where you're at. And um, to understand what what's important about these spots, we need to back up a second here and look at uh, the sand bass and calico bass we're mostly targeting on these uh, on these types of submerged structure. And this is this applies for anything in you know 20 or 30 feet of water up to 120 feet of water. So. Um, these spots, be the isolated spots or bigger pieces of structure, is something that bass associate with well enough that you can go there and target them. Now, sand bass are colored so that they can lay on the bottom on a sandy bottom and basically hide from fish swimming above and feed in an upward way. But, <clears throat> well, I'm sure there's plenty of sand bass scattered around in the sand. Uh, running into one is almost impossible unless you find a piece of structure that's going to be a much higher percentage play. To, uh, to have a, a, a fish relating to it than you know, just any random spot in the ocean. So our main structure types here are hard bottom, uh, which is basically just shale. A lot of times it has sand over it. And you wouldn't know it's hard bottom by, you know, if you looked at it underwater, but your fish finder will tell you the bottom is harder there. And usually that harder bottom, though it has some shifting sand over it, will cause changes in the current, which aggregate bait fish and by association uh, sand bass and calico bass. Next up would be natural features like rocks um, and ridges. These are just uh, geographical features that are like anywhere else here. You know you find a big rock on the on the side of the of a hill it's no different in the ocean and uh, uh, sometimes will be associated with a definite type of structure. I know there's areas off Huntington Beach where there's a lot of small black rocks just sitting on the bottom. By small I mean you know, the size of a, a, a small car, but they're just isolated and they're surrounded by sand. And I don't know how they got there, but uh, they're there. And I'm um, so sure something happened way back when that caused those things to be there, but the sand bass associate with them. So that's really all I care about. Um, next up are non man made things, they, or actually man made things. These could be wrecks, these could be artificial reefs, these could be uh, underwater sewer pipes. Um, all these things, regardless of what the uh, composition of these rocks and reefs are, they all fish the same basically. So that's really all you need to know. And um, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to talk about a pretty popular spot, Iser's Reef here off of uh, off Huntington Beach. Uh, that reef, I've dropped GoPros down there just to get to look at what it looks like down there. And that entire reef is almost all of it is made up from uh, <clears throat> uh, light poles, concrete light poles when they did. Uh, they took them off the freeway and put new ones in. They dumped them all out there. There's all kinds of rubble. Uh, rebar coming out of stuff. Yeah, they, I guess they destroyed some kind of overpass or something and dumped the whole thing out there. Um, these bigger reefs, while they look good on the fish finder, are pretty barren of bass unless you find an area where those bass are holding. And most of the fish you see on the meter when you stop on these things are going to be perch. Mostly blacksmith perch and blue perch. Uh, the occasional small white fish or sheephead as well. Um, I've dropped enough GoPros to uh, on pretty much everything to get a good look at it all. And um, pretty much everything you're metering for the most part is going to be perch if you just see fish. And the tricky thing about perch is they tend to hold still when they're under the boat. They just suspend under your boat. And the longer they suspend, the bigger their signal becomes on your fish finder. So, you know, you might, I've been at spots before, like Catalina and stuff, where I'm looking, boy, I got all these big worms on the fish finder. I must have sea bass under me, maybe yellows. And I look down, those big worms are just caused by this blue perch. It's this long, that big, that wide, and it's just sitting directly under that, that fish finder. Um, if you're going to see feeding fish on your fish finder, it's most likely going to 
show up as uh, as movement. And these calico bass here, um, this was at the Newport Pipe. Uh, these fish were. Uh, actively feeding. We were catching them on crankbaits. You can kind of see how they go up and down on the meter. They're not stationary. They're moving around. They're feeding. They may pause, but it's, it shows motion. Any kind of game fish you find on your meter is going to give some indication of movement, unlike the perch mark, which just look like straight lines, basically. Uh, the other thing you're going to see on your fish finder is sand bass. And while sand bass, you're not going to mark them if they're just hanging out, because they're either laying on the bottom or they're close to the bottom, just chilling out and until they come up to feed, you often won't see them. But the nice thing about the fish finder technology we have today is that you can really get a good look at these things when they, when they do come up. This is a, is a shot from a spot that we fished a couple winters ago off Point the Beach. There's a little squid bed out there. And I ran over a little rock that I, I'd fished before. Saw a little bit of red fuzz on the bottom, not much. Dropped lures. And as my lures were sinking down, these bass came up from the bottom this giant pile of them. And you can actually see this, this line coming down here is my lure dropping. And then this right here is a sand bass coming up and intercepting that lure, you know, at 60 feet. That takes 40 feet off the bottom where I didn't have a mark before they came up to eat this bait. So they're not lazy fish. And you can see here I'm winding it up, dug his head a little bit, wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. And as I'm throwing it over the side, you can see here on the, the blue where it's gassing out as it's swimming back down. So, um, Pretty cool technology anyway, but that's on a, on a Simrad uh, NSS Evo 3. Um, but the, uh, so the mark with sand bass, you're probably not going to mark them. You're going to mark structure. I don't look for fish when I'm fishing structure on the meter because usually it's perch. So I, yeah, I'll stop on a spot and whether or not I see what looks like fish, I'll drop, see what happens, you know, get a result that way. Um, I'll be talking about the lures and presentations in a subsequent video. But um, the other thing when fishing any of these spots, especially the larger spots, is you're going to be looking for bait fish. Now, bait fish are going to show up as the same kind of balls and blobs that you see anywhere else. And um, on a bigger spot, let's go back to, uh, let's go to Point Loma here. Um, one moment. Now, Point Loma is a much bigger piece of structure than, than we'd imagine. You know, it's a, we know where the kelp is and the other stuff is. There's a huge piece of underwater rock that comes out a good distance away from it. You know, it stretches out much further than that, almost down to the Coronados. And there's also more structure down off Imperial Beach. But um, there's so much structure out there that there's no way there's going to be bass everywhere. And um, any of those huge pieces of structure, this, the underground, underwater sewer pipes, those things, if you try to just stop and fish on those, you're probably not going to catch anything. So what I'll do in this situation is I will look for an area that has, uh, that's facing into the current. Let's say we got a downhill current, it's hitting the, the uh, west side of uh, Point Loma here where this, uh, where this rocky reef goes to the bottom. Now I'll look along that edge for bait fish that are there to feed on the upwelling of the uh, current and the zooplankton that's attracted to that. And once I start marking those bait fish, if those bait fish are just a wall of bait fish on my meter, then it's probably not going to have any bass on it. But if I'm seeing bait bowls that are tight and not consistent throughout, I'll drop lures. And a lot of times you could drop on a spot like that. And you know, if you've got two or three guys in the boat, everybody hooks up before they even make it down to the bottom because those, there's actively feeding fish there. And in this case, you know how I talked about uh, moving your boat around through mooring cans or eelgrass beds and making casts in the harbor. Uh, when fishing deep structure, you need to do that moving around with your fish finder as opposed to a lure in your hand because you can't cover the amount of water you need to. If you're, if you're fishing an area that's a mile long, you can't just make cast after cast as you go along and expect to locate fish. So you're going to drive around and your search bait now is going to be your fish finder looking for bait bowls. And in whatever the case is, wherever you are, Isers Reef, Point Loma, the Newport Pipe, any of these places that are big spots, you have to do an equation. You have to say, okay, I've seen this on my, on my fish finder. This looks like balls of bait. Let me run a crankbait through here. Let me drop a, a swim bait or a slug on this. And if I don't get a bite, let me drive along and look for something slightly different. If I do get a bite, let me drive along and look for the same thing happening. And then also try and figure out why they're there. You know, with the charting technology we have these days, the Simrad chart, um, it tells you everything you need to know. I mean, when I got my first boat, 
we didn't know any of this stuff. We had spots, you know, we had, we didn't understand that stuff relates to stuff. And you know, it's funny, a friend of mine, he's a little more low tech than I am. I fished down in uh, Point Loma with him. Um, uh, well, he came on my boat I and mean, he talked about, it. he had a couple of pinnacles off Point Loma that he catches calicos on. And uh, I found that kind of funny because I'm like, I don't really remember any pinnacles down there, but so I went, he kind of gave me land bearings. We went, what, what he was actually doing was driving back and forth where the edge dropped off. And you can only see what was on his fish finder. So he, he couldn't make the connection between his fish finder going up and down like this with that not being an isolated spot, but being a spot that's a mile long. So now we have a full picture of this whole thing. And it's very easy to figure out once you see some sign, once you have some success. Sorry about that, my video cut out. But, uh, you know, once you have some success, um, you can parlay that into future success by considering what you were doing when you got those bites. So you can say, I saw a bait on the meter. I was on the up current edge of this spot. Where can I go and have that same success? In the bay, you know, you're doing the same thing with mooring cans or eelgrass beds where you're just traveling and casting. But here in open water, you can't do that because it's a much bigger playing field. I mean, the spot could be a mile long or more. So now you're driving around looking for similar conditions with your fish finder seeing how the bait fish are relating to the structure. Are they on the up current edge? Where are they? Do they have fish on them? Um, all these little factors come into play. And the only way you're gonna gain this experience is by going out there and looking into this and doing it yourself. So, you know, take a day and go to a challenging spot. A great, you know, there's every harbor has a, a submerged sewer pipe near it. Um, I know there's one in San Diego, there's the Santa Ana River pipe in the, in uh, Newport Beach, you know, that's the, uh, Jimmy Decker called it Long Rock. It's uh, a giant piece of structure that's narrow and a couple miles long and bass live on that and feed on that year round. And one day they might be in 10 feet of water, the next day they might be in 100 feet of water. But what they're doing is they're following the bait. They're not just going in one spot. So if you go to that spot, you stop and cast that allure, the chance of you catching something, no matter what you see on the meter, because it's probably perch, is not gonna really, uh, you got a pretty low percentage play there. So drive around, drive up and down the spot looking for bait fish. And don't just look for huge balls of bait, look for bait that's having a bad experience. Broken up spots, small spots. You might meet some calicos that are feeding. I mean, there's been times in the middle of winter we pulled up on a Newport pipe in 80 feet of water and caught Calicos and sand bass on crankbaits that run 15 feet deep. These fish are not caring about how deep they are. They fish that relate to a piece of structure that changes the depth a lot don't really care about depth so much. They care about where the bait fish are. And the bait fish care about where the zooplankton are that day. And the zooplankton are going to be where the current is upwelling across the structure. So some days uh, there might be more of that deeper water. Some days there might be more of a shallow. So, you know, you can't have a predisposition that, you know, I go to this spot at the five, like you put a waypoint in and that's where you're gonna fish. No, you need to go and drive around and look for bait balls. I mean, I've, I've had days where I've gone to the pipe and I've driven around for half an hour up and down to find an area where there's some bait being fed on and then caught a bunch of fish and had them stop biting and drive up and down the pipe for another 10 or 15 minutes by another area. It could be 30 feet deeper or shallower, but that's where the fish are feeding right then and there. So you have to be flexible on these superstructure spots. Not like you go to the isolated structure spot where you just drop down and they're biting or not. You know, you can take Isers, for example, Isers Reef and uh, Hike the Beach. Uh, that's a big piece of structure. You can't just stop on a waypoint and expect to catch something. You need to drive around there and take the temperature of that spot that day. Is there any bait? Is there bait everywhere? Is there current? Which way is the current going? You know, fish have, when the current runs, fish have to point into it to hold position. So that's gonna orient everything. So if there's bait fish on the up current edge of the spot, the fish are probably gonna be there if they're hungry. If there's bait fish on the back end of it, the fish will probably be back there, but the fish will be behind the bait fish because they have to point in that direction to stay swimming. So they're not gonna be, they can't look backwards. So not gonna be, it's not gonna be a bait ball is here and you go up current to there and find fish. So it's all experimenting and trying different things. And um, there's a lot to it. And I don't wanna make this video exceptionally long. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep it at that. But uh, you know, uh, next couple of weeks I'll be sharing some more videos about the same thing. So uh, 
That's about it. Have a great weekend and good luck if you fish.